fortunate to have him share his expertise with us today on how to integrate writing into our courses. But please welcome Dr. Edmund. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Sabak al khair, ustara ta wa ustara. Um, don't be impressed. <laughs> um, in addition to being a professor, I am a freshman at TAM UCC. Now, I, I started with through the application process, and I am taking my first class, which is beginning Arabic. And the reason I'm doing that is I have some actually professional research interests that uh, it will help me if I, I, I uh, can read the, under, uh, the Arabic language. Uh, so, um, but my first semester, I struggled. L learning a language is hard. I am 57 years old, hearing's going, the writing is very small, and none of the letters look like anything you have in English. Um, but the second semester, um, we started writing. She had us do writing essays, writing portfolios, and my learning curve has shot up. I'm doing better grade-wise, but I'm also putting the material together, and it really Really, I, it's, it's just like night and day, really, for me, for my own learning. Why? Why do you think that is? Speculation, there are no right answers. I was mystified myself. <laughs> it makes sense of the language. Ooh, gold star here. Increased exposure with the confidence, uh, uh, with, with the Content and practice. Yeah, like, like I just learned how to do the second person plural female yesterday. And so I was like, boom, I, I just, just dropped it in. It suddenly, I, I read the book, I sat through class, and I was writing, and boom, oh, that's how you do it as well. And the topic of my, the title of my talk is really um, using writing to improve learning. This is just something generic I, I did at the beginning as well. Because one of the challenges, um, and by the way, I'm not talking about writing papers and grading papers. I'm talking about in-class writing activities, what's called right to learn. Uh, I can be glad to individually talk to you about those other things as well. But our biggest challenge, I think, when we teach is to um, really in encourage disciplinary thinking. People, well, maybe I, I was going to stay, <laughs> stay away from there. I guess I need to be in line of sight with the thing. <laughs> Uh, over there, um, so it'll work. Um, and one of the challenges when we teach, whatever it is we teach, uh, we need to people to think like people who do our stuff, or do our fields think. And often it's very, very, very foreign. They can learn the terms, they can learn the concepts, they can uh, do the books, uh, you, know, you know, objective quizzes books, but they're really not thinking the way people who do all our fields think. And it's different with different fields. I'll just use a very specific and I think um, example because I think it's straightforward. One of the field, uh, topics I teach is grant writing. There is a specific way that grant writers think. If you work for a nonprofit, you deal with a social problem, an issue, whether it's substance abuse or whether it's hunger. I'll, I'll deal with food banks. So, I'm working with the food bank, and I notice that in our service area, there are a lot of elderly people who don't have access to food. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. So, well, what do you do if we're, if we're trying to get money for it or if we're trying to get grab for it? Well, first of all, you document the problem exists. You prove that it exists. And you pull some data. This is what I was talking with you all about earlier um, as well. And, and you, and you uh, pull some data together that shows why it exists. Okay? Got, got to prove to somebody who's going to give you money that there's a problem exists, that, that you need to give us money. You design a program that addresses those problems. You get more food out there. <laughs> you know, uh, you're going to create a series of drops like that. So you design a program that will address the problem. As well, then you create a series of goals and objectives, and that would be the whole thing, which are essentially specific activities, you know, uh, that are time bound and sensitive. By this, we're going to do this. We're going to identify new sites. Uh, we're going to est establish volunteers. We're going to begin deliveries, or you know, whatever it is. So you design some activities that will address that. Um, you create a budget, and every item in your budget 
is going to correspond with a specific activity that's going to address that problem. And budgeting is really interesting because I tell people budgets are moral documents. And initially they look at me like I'm crazy. Well, I'm like, you know, you say this is important. Where's the money going to go that's going to address that as well? And then you create some method of evaluation or proving or demonstrating that what you're doing is making a difference in that. It's a very specific, very linear way of thinking that starts with a problem and goes through the budget and has an outcome that addresses this particular problem. It's a style of thinking that um, is really familiar to MPA students, my English majors, um, need a little bit of education to learn to think that way as well. So writing helps us address this by helping us learn and model new patterns of thinking. So these are, these are just some quotes about writing, the connections between writing and thinking, writing and learning. Um, I won't read them out loud to you as well. I uh, had to get the obligatory office meme in there just because uh, just as well. So um, the other thing about writing is, and I'm sure, I'm sure most of us are familiar with Bloom's taxonomy. If you're not, basically, the things at the bottom are easier stuff, just learning terms and things like that. Uh, and the higher up the level you go, the more engaged the learning are, the more abstract thinking is, the more learning is going on. So th that's uh, Bloom's taxonomy. And writing essentially pushes you up the pyramid, for the lack of a better term as well. Um, there is success, baby. And we'll talk about that as well. There's some things that when we teach our, our discipline, uh, we're teaching, we're teaching disciplinary thinking as well. And, so, um, and when we talk about learning, I'm talking very specifically, and we probably all know this, but learning isn't just, you know, I hear a lecture, I read something. It's I'm doing something with it, I'm applying it, I'm taking it in, uh, the way he described my Arabic process, doing something with it, creating something new. Uh, it pushes towards higher level thinking, uh, it reinforces learning, it rewires the brain. Um, and writing slows down thinking. And some people, when I talk to a lot of teachers, they say, you know, I'd like to do more writing in my classes, but I just don't have the time because I have so much I have to cover. And I understand that and I respect that. There was a professor uh, at UT for many years. I do not remember his name, unfortunately, but he taught calculus. He did not use a book. And he did the entire class. He had the students get up at the board and do whatever math it was they were doing that day. There was no sitting down, taking notes. They were doing the math. Sometimes they would work in pairs or in groups. Sometimes they would work individually. And he would go around and just watch them. And All they did was do math in class all period long. They never got through the textbook or all the stuff they were supposed to cover in class. His, uh, and UT has a common final for calculus. His students always scored significantly higher than the students of any other professor on that. And a very large number of those students went on to become professional uh, mathematicians because he wasn't just trying to cover the concepts. He was saying, you know, Coverage is a siren song, essentially. And if I can teach students how to think like mathematicians, they can handle even the stuff I don't cover in class because they will have internalized the thinking process. So, now, I bet you're, you're familiar with Success Baby. His name is Sammy Griner. Picture was taken in 2007. And immediately after, before this picture was taken, he took put a handful of sand in his mouth. <laughs> And if you look at it very closely, you can see he's like, Sammy Grinder, learn something. Learn, I better not put sand in my mouth again. That's really gross. You know, it's a, the perfect learning experience, Exper <laughs> experiential, right, uh, as well. Now, um, I'm, I've got some uh, several studies I've done uh, uh, that have been done uh, specifically. I'm sorry, Christine, I don't mean to have my back to you. Um, uh, by people who study learning in higher education, uh, lights uh, make most causes very famous. And essentially, and I won't read the quote, but essentially, uh, writing engages students. They're engaged and, imp and improves retention as well. Um, sorry, uh, I jumped. Um, 
writing is something you do. You use writing as opposed to teaching writing. And teachers, and, and what uh, uh, Bain says is that basically if you can create scenarios or activities or problems that students can do and approach with writing, um, you, uh, I don't have my glasses on, to create intriguing, beautiful, or important problems, authentic tasks which challenge them uh, to grapple with ideas, rethink their assumptions, and examine the mental models of reality. And um, I'm not sure you're familiar with Lef uh, Vygotsky's definition of learning, but he calls learning the reorganization of the cognitive scheme in light of experience. If you really learn something, your brain changes in some meaningful or important way as well. And the way to get at this is uh, through low stakes writing. And here's uh, low stakes writing are, are, is just that. Not necessarily stuff that's graded, they're not necessarily long papers. They're short things, and these are just some examples uh, which, yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of things reflect on reading ahead of time, uh, and they help us think about understanding. So I'm just going to go through and talk about some characteristics. Low stakes writing is short. Sometimes it's a sentence, sometimes it's a paragraph. You're encouraging students to think, explore ideas. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna grade it. We're not gonna worry about spelling, punctuation, grammar. I'm not saying those things are important. I'm saying there are saying they're separate things than what we're trying to do with this as well. Um, it helps students organize their thinking. Remember, how do I know what I think till I see what I write at the beginning? Uh, it helps them you know, engage with the content at the end. Uh, and you can do it different times. You can do it before class. You can do it at the beginning of class. You can do it at the end of class. And it's most effective because you're trying to model thinking. You don't think once and then never think again if you, you have them, these activities involved regularly in your class as well. Um, here's some activities. Abstract. You know, you know how abstract is. You boil it down to the essentials, the main ideas. This is what, do it before class, bring an abstract to class. Have them in class, abstract your reading previously uh, as well. A one sentence sur summary of a reading or Give yourself five minutes at the end of class, one, one sentence summary of what we got from class. Um, this young man, I stole a technique from one of his CFE workshops, and at the end of class every day, he waits, uh, he, he gets done about five minutes early, he goes to the exit, he says, pack up your stuff, and on your way out, shake my hand, tell me your name, and tell me one thing you got out of this class. I started doing that, and Students take it seriously. They're like, you know, oh, somebody says something. Oh, I was going to say that. I'll get back to the end of the line. So they can really give something uh, because they take it seriously. Not, not something that that other person said as well. And, of course, it increases the personal contact. You'll learn their names as well. At this point in the semester, I'm shaking my hands and telling them their name. And, you know, um, it's, it's a great technique. I stole it straight from him, like total credit uh, as well. Um, Headlines, write a newspaper headline uh, of a key concept. Paraphrase, key key ideas, put in your own word. Application cards, give everybody a card. Come up with a real life scenario in which what we just talked about might occur. Collect them, share two or three or four or five, however many, however many you got as well. Um, other activities, free writing. It's a very specific tool, you gotta use short. Write whatever you know about whatever subject. Say we're about to start a new unit. What do you know about it? It's just, just one minute, write down what you know. Share two or three ideas as well. Uh, one minute papers. You gotta, you gotta have short, specific prompts. Um, and again, in your own field, it'll be, it'll be different as well. Um, what are, you know, this grant writing unit, uh, what are some ways in which we could um, demonstrate the problems that elderly people face in rural communities in terms of access to food. Let's come up with some strategies, how, how we might demonstrate that as well. Um, students, you know, students could pose questions that should be posed to the whole class. Email the author. This is a good one. I didn't get that. <laughs> Email the author, make a suggestion improvement, or ask a deeper clarifying question as well. Um, and here's another one, particularly in math. Here's the problem you've never seen before. How might you go about solving it? And what are some strategies that you already know that you might apply to this new situation? 
describing the process as well. Um, how are we doing on time? 12.15, okay. Um, now, a note about responding. These do not need to be graded. These do not need to be graded. These do not need to be graded. Uh, uh, if you do read them, don't kind of focus only on content. You know, the idea is, and if you respond, no longer than a sentence. If that, as well. Um, in small classes, you can have students, um, or some students, read their writing aloud, and there's some part of it. Uh, in larger classes, you can have students work in groups of three to four. Um, they, can, they, can re they can read each other's work to each other, respond. Because remember, reading, being heard, students responding to each other is a legitimate and important form of response, just as important and sometimes just as effective as um, the, uh, uh, what the teacher says. And uh, I've, the largest class I've ever taught is 60, but I've used these techniques pretty regularly in groups of 60. And students will do their group work, and people will sometimes observe my class and they'll say, you know, well, you'll never read aloud every thing that people write in a group. And I'll say, but they're discussing it, they're disagreeing, they're agreeing, they're affirming each other's ideas, they're questioning each other's ideas. So what happens in those, idea, in those groups uh, involves a great deal of learning. And so remember, I'm pushing learning. I'm not saying, saying as opposed to teaching, but as teachers, we can only do so much. But we need to create conditions in which that learning can happen as well. Um, sometimes, again, just collect them, glance over it. Yep, they did it. Give them a check or whatever. Or you can have them hold on to throughout, throughout the semester, pick up five at the very end, and have them turn them in with an explanation as to why you chose these five, why these five pieces of low-stakes writing um, reflect things that they've learned throughout the semester. That does all kinds of good things as well. Um, other thoughts, and I don't read this out loud, but there is a lot of information out there that demonstrates that doing these kind of activities uh, significantly uh, promotes retention, learning and retention as well. It's particularly dramatic, the improvement in math and sciences. And again, I keep on saying this, it reinforces disciplinary. Um, and I'm, I, you've got these, I'm not gonna even read these, but, but just note the different subjects, biology, math, statistics, psychology, uh, sociology, accounting, uh, music education, and again, I pull these just because of the different disciplines that they're in. There's lots of different specific studies as well. Um, and I went past this too quickly. Kelly, I'm sorry, you did see the cat meme, right? You did. I, I promised Kelly a cat meme. Um, so what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to, on the back of your PowerPoint or whatever, uh, think about a class that you do and come up with some low stakes writing activities. You know, just, just on a pen. We've even provided you with paper and pens <laughs> as you go. Uh, what's the class that you teach? What are some low stakes writing activities you might try? And these are the questions. You know, what are some things, some patterns of thinking that you want them to, to learn? Uh, I'm about to do a new unit next. We might, I might try this at the beginning. Uh, I'm finishing something up. I want to make sure that they got X. Um, students always struggle when I teach budgeting. <laughs> you know, budgeting, right, right. Um, can I create an activity that encourages students to, I talk about why it's hard. I'm sorry about the extra bullets there. Or better yet, develop a strategy for better understanding it uh, as well. And if you want my budgeting exercise, email me. It's, I think I've perfected that one. That's okay as well. So I'm going to ask you all to do this, and I'm just going to hop around, and I'm going to pick on you. I'm going to ask you to share some ideas that you've got. Hey, how are you? How are we doing, Christina? David, 
Oh, is somebody else there with you? Oh, there. Okay. Well, could, could you move over with them? Because I want you all to chat with each other just a little bit. Oh. Okay. Well, m- m- maybe you can sit on this edge and talk to these folks. Then I, w- I want you all to chat just a time. You go over there. You, you, you'll be Christina's friend. Then <laughs> that'll work as well. Because uh, once you get that done, I just want to chat with your table mates or unindicted co-conspirators and j- just share the ideas that you've come up with. What are some ideas that you've come up with as well? What are some ideas that you've come up with? Are we still in time to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what kind of writing prompts could you give them to? Oh, I have that. I'm thinking that about that for tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, and what what is it? AP anatomy and physiology. Okay. Oh, yeah. But what's the prompt itself? Oh, describe the first heart function. The first heart function. Okay. Describe. They describe the first heart function. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That would take an image and flatten it with all the drawings. And so, what are you doing to get that? And you have many lines and all kinds of things. So, I'm thinking for the engineers, that would be a good prompt or something like that. Cool. Gold stars. There you go. Yeah, 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 it is, and then they can focus on the content as well. Yeah, because they're not going to worry about oh, oh, is the comma in the wrong place? Yeah, cool. All right. Y'all probably know all this stuff already, but what are some ideas you've come up with? Okay. Their life, very All right. Let's say we, uh, we don't have financial markets. Mm-hmm. Imagine a world without okay. financial markets. No okay. banks, no financial institutions, no mortgage, no credit. Correct. How does it, how would it change your your life, your family's life? Yeah. Your would that increase your standards today, or to be better off or worse off? Well, yeah. You know. I like that. No student loan. No student loan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah, that. yeah. That's interesting. Jim, what? Yes. Why? Now why? I mean, I. What I think, right? We need to do writing. We need. We need to require students to, to write something. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why writing helps you organize your thoughts. I mean, it is. It is. Or, or it's just because of how our brain works. Okay. It does slow down because I have to. Yeah. No, uh, well, it is one way to force systematic thinking. It's not the only way, because, 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 it, it, because it's got to go into a particular way that makes sense to other people. So it does force yeah. you to think systematically. Yeah, yeah. So, and plus the other, and there's a whole lot of brain psychology there too. But basically, when you write, you're doing something with your hands. So you're doing something tactile, and then you're reading it. So you're visually reinforcing. Uh-huh. Right. So you're creating language. You're you're doing something tactile, and you're visually reinforcing it. So there's literally three different kinds of learning going on when you write something down. Which is one of the reasons I don't mean to be um, a, a stick in the mud, but but when students take pictures of the stuff that you put on the board, they're short. They really are short circuiting their own learning. Oh yeah, I got it. So I don't, I don't need to yeah. to, to, to digest yeah. from on there. I mean, I, yeah, I yeah, so. I yeah. Writing is like tricky because you can edit something. Yeah, yeah, you can, you, you can be wrong. <laughs> Go back. They're always excited, like nervous about. Uh-huh. But you know, when it's about writing, they feel more comfortable right. because if they mess up, they can edit. Yeah. They can go back and change it. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. So bad. I mean, mine too. I mean, 
<laughs> well, yeah, and, since, since, and that, that's one of the things that's interesting. You'll have students, and it's clear they understand it when you talk to them, but when they express it on the page, it's like, why didn't you tell me what you just said? Why didn't you just write down what you just said rather than just what you wrote? Yeah, yeah. Forcing systematic thinking. Yeah, cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. What are some activities we came up with? Well, I mean, I, I just thought about some of my, my graduate classes, pretty much all I teach at the time, and I was thinking possibly if uh, I'm introducing a new topic, maybe I can have them give me a brief summary of the current understanding of that topic, maybe read it off, and then through the materials I end up presenting, or we end up doing, um, then we can always recall back to some of the things yeah. we wrote about, kind of like filling in the blanks almost. Yeah, yeah. I thought about something like yeah. that. And then you could work off of that, and then if, if you have them hold on at the very end of the unit, have them come back and say, okay, do it again, very briefly, and then have them compare this. Like a summary of the material. Yeah. Or maybe they we present something and have them find some research and summarize it for us in writing, and then we can present it again. Yeah, and, and then more information gets out there. Yeah. yeah cool. Uh, but that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. I like those ideas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they reject it. <laughs> They're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should I eat eggs or not? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I like it. Cool. All right. I'm going to just... Okay. I'm just going to Easter egg around here. I'm going to ask each table to share one idea uh, that they came up with. And if you don't want to share your idea, throw one of your table mates under the bus. Okay? And, and sure, they're right. Um, what's an idea that we came up here with here? Uh, in, in what, 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 subject, what class are we talking about? So, um, we're going to just look at some examples. Um, is, you know, as a teacher in language, I recognize that most of the learning happens right now, as you all are talking to each other. But sometimes we have to come back together and sort of summarize and share some ideas. So here is communication theory. Yes. Yeah we, yeah, we were just talking about that as well. Have an activity, and then you're uh, beginning and after, and then see how the understanding changes. Cool. Good stuff. What are some activities we came up with over here? Well, we came up with one about each chapter, <coughs> do a review, mm -hmm. stuff, where we take 10 main ideas, and the student was just on their own write out 10 main ideas they learned from each chapter, mm -hmm. and then another question about the personal application. How can they can apply what they learn from the chapter to their everyday lives? Okay. Ten main ideas, yeah. apply it. Apply it. Cool. What's some ideas over here? So I am uh, trying to get students to write up, write math. Math, okay. Uh, students develop their own conjectures uh, about what we are discussing. So they are developing, they, are, they write their own reasoning and then 
based on their writings and their justification, they discuss with peers, so it's a, a less a threatening environment for them mm -hmm. to uh, share their mathematical ideas. But when while they are writing it through, they are clarifying and also revealing themselves mm -hmm. that they are lacking support, so I can readjust my teaching. I know you're, this is a good point. And several people mentioned, and they still said this as well, writing it out is a little res less risky, you know, because you write it out and maybe you didn't get it, but oh, well, I can revise that, I can change that, I can edit it, I can fix it, I can, I, I can add this so I can deepen my understanding. So, so you hear the words non-threatening and, yeah. And I also get them right proofs or uh, conjectures with their names and uh, we have uh, Rebecca something about the mathematical idea, then they take some ownership of it, yeah. and then it sticks with them. They know that this is Rebecca's stuff. Yeah, it's Rebecca's idea. Good stuff. Great, thanks. Um, come over here. Um, one of the things that I thought of, uh, pretty straightforward for a graduate class that teach uh, uh, exercise physiology, um, thinking that uh, when we introduce a new topic, um, that we could have them write a brief summary maybe five minutes or something, or a paragraph with respect to what their current level of understanding is on a topic, um, then have uh, them share smaller class, uh, and then throughout the class we can fill in the holes with some of the material we present or with some of the activities we end up doing, and possibly even using a summary at the end of the unit, something of that nature. Yeah, like she was saying, to sort of compare. Yeah, yeah, cool, good stuff. Um, over here. Our multidisciplinary table. This is the most multidisciplinary table over there. So. Well, one of the um, one of the things that I thought of for an intro class. Yeah, he teaches poli sci, by the way, right? Okay. Large two hundred was for when we talk about um, public policy and sort of policy process. Was to I mean I have my examples and go through the. Yeah, so consequences of policy, it's kind of like what you were talking about earlier. Why don't you go ahead and chat since, since, since it's, you, got, you shared a similar idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, listen, what, listen, listen, listen. Tell him about the impact of the new U.S.-Mexico deal on their life, on their family life, right? As a consumer, how their body is affected, how their consumption pattern is affected, how their neighbors are affected, you know, because trade policy affects every individual differently. So they can write something like that. Yeah. The second one is... Uh, Hypothetically, imagine that there is no financial market, no student loans, no mortgages, no credit cards, nothing. What would change in your life? You know? Hmm. Right? Yeah. Good stuff. Cool. We all are, had a number of ideas flying around here. We did, and we're pretty multidisciplinary here as well. Um, I, what I try to do... Oil spills guy, or... or <laughs> so, <laughs> and by, <laughs> and by, <laughs>
hopefully make their uh, agents their, their industry report at the end of the semester much better. Over the course of the semester, I give them uh, uh, basically two assignments each each week, not every week, but most weeks. One of them is to paraphrase a current event mm -hmm. uh, in environmental regulations that's come up that week. And trust me, in this political climate, there are a lot of <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's easy to teach right now. <laughs> Yeah, Use, using the university resources as well. Yeah, this is just a, a very straight up example of disciplinary thinking because academic writing is not technical writing. It's much different. The cognitive processes, the things that you do, the way you organize information are in some ways the complete opposite of everything they've been taught is good in a, you know, a, a good, an essay in high school or something like that. So, good point. My peeps, my cool English peeps. What are some ideas we've come up with over here? Okay, you got you got thrown under the bus or voted voted onto the island. Okay. I think for two seminars and one of the seminars I'm teaching is the AP nursing students, and I think I would show them a picture and ask them to explain this phase of um, mid to late preschooler high school period of interstitial spilling. Because it's just a bunch of words on a heart, but they need to know <laughs> what happens during that phase. So. Yeah. Here's a diagram. Explain what's going on, right? Because it, it 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 does all kinds of things like that. Cool. These are great ideas. I'm sure you had many more that did not get shared. So you see Dory Fish. Just keep writing. Um, the, these are the books that I mentioned to you that are studies that specifically uh, about learning in higher education. Uh, there's my contact info if you have other questions as well. I also left my cards on the table uh, if you have any questions. I appreciate it. I'd be glad to answer questions. I'd be glad to chat more. Uh, and again, I focused only one specific way uh, of using writing. I thought it'd be more more useful than just uh, a broad kind of thing as well. There are many other ways to use writing. Many of you all do term papers, research things, lab reports, things like that as well. Those are all great ways. But this is something that I think many people don't think about, uh, about ways of using writing in terms of low stakes kind of ways stuff that I don't have to grade necessarily that can really amplify and ramp up learning. Are there questions? Yes. Currently what I'm doing in my morning class because I teach Foundations of Communication mm -hmm. 13, uh, 13, 11, I try to administer open response activities at the beginning of class that's relevant. Uh, to the content that we'll be further discussing in class. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's relying on them having a sense of previous reading in order mm -hmm. to stay sharp. But I was wondering, is it most effective to have a writing activity at the beginning and at the end of class, or do you feel just having it in either or period-wise would be most efficient? Okay, uh, did you all hear the question? Uh, basically, he has people, this is, probably too too much of a simplification. He generally has people write at the beginning of class to uh, gauge understanding of reading. The question is, is it most effective to do it at the beginning of class or at the end of class or both or different times as well? Um, what do you all think? And I'm really not trying to, 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 to che be cheesy or pass this off. There's different different st teaching, different style, different experience. I think it's useful if you're writing throughout the class because mm. so you can get them started with some thinking before the class really gets going discuss some things, and then have them respond to it, and then as the class comes to a close, have them write something else so they're writing throughout the class session, continuing to think along with you, and then applying the things that we talked about in class. Okay. So I think the process is probably better. Yeah. Just the continuous engagement as well. Uh, other ideas, other thoughts? Did you want, were you raising your hand, David, or you just, no, no, you were just, you are just picking the mustache. All right. I thought you were trying to get my attention as well. Yeah. I guess my only thought on, as I'd be partial to writing at least at the beginning of the middle. I'd, I'd probably stay away from the end, at least because it seems to me that they would be, they, the students would be ready to get out of, get out of the classroom by that point. If there's an award. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Is a reflective writing? So they don't have to shed out the final thoughts or something, but as they like as they form their ideas, they can also share the process. Yeah. And also uh, share the reflection with peers. And peers, uh, so you are not writing just for yourself, but also a way of communicating with the others. They need to give each other feedback mm -hmm. and each other. Uh, Read each other writing and give feedback and response. I think that you also bring more accountability. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more accountability by doing it that way. Uh, and the reason, I, uh, and we've gotten different answers, and and they're all right. It depends on what you want to accomplish that day. I, I would say um, I usually begin class with some kind of writing because I have found that I need some kind of either carrot or stick, you can call it what you will, to make sure students do the writing, reading. I, 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 just, I just got to do that as well. Um, sometimes, um, look what we did here. I did a rather long mini lesson, <laughs> right to learn. You all wrote and engaged in activity, and we're ending by uh, sharing our ideas, essentially, as well. Um, I find that shifts having students doing some different activities. Because sometimes, you know, we talk about, you know, you shouldn't lecture all the time. But sometimes you just got to give information. Sometimes you know stuff, and you got to get it out there so they can deal with it, so they can do something with it. So it's not that lecturing is bad. It's just it's it, used exclusively. It's not the most effective teaching technique, if that makes sense as well. So um, personally, my answer would be shift it up, you know, so students are have several different kinds of things they're doing, so they're engaging the material in different ways. That's me personally, but uh, and basically other people have said the same thing. Well, I would use it this way, I would use it this way. It depends on what you achieve. If, you're tr if, if the number one goal is I need to make sure they do the reading, keep it at the beginning of class. Um, if, if you got other goals that day or that week or for that unit, use it a different way. And, all, and, um, and like I said, I, I essentially do this by, by stealing uh, his idea at the very end, as I will, uh, when we're done, I will meet you at the end, at, at the door, and have you tell me something that you got out of our class today. So, anyway, uh, other questions? Kelly, I did the cat meme. Take food away. Take lots of food. Oh, I didn't do any online shopping. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Wait, 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 wait. One thing you got out of class. <laughs> Thank you. What's one thing you got out of class? Um, all the interesting stories I can do. And what's your name? Lauren. Lauren, and you are in? Psychology. Psychology. Great. Thanks, Lauren. Daniel Maitland. Daniel. Uh, just novel ways of incorporating writing, and I've used one-minute writing for a while.